point in the examination and the autopsy in determining the cause of death. Okay. Well, I examined the remains. Let's see, the remains were found on the 6th. I was doing the examination on the 7th. I had employees who were, went, responded back to the scene uh, to canvas the scene during the daylight hours to see if we could find any more um, uh, physical remains there at the scene. I was doing the examination on the, the 7th and did not see any skeletal trauma to the remains that I have. Um, and was able to make the positive identification <clears throat> upon being given the dental records on the 8th. Um, so in looking at everything that I had, um, I could not arrive at a specific cause of death. Again, I'm limited in what I have. I just have bones here. But as I mentioned earlier, as a medical examiner, we don't conduct examinations in a vacuum. And you've got to consider the circumstances. And then once knowing who this deceased was, young female, no known significant medical conditions, last known to be alive some distance from where these remains were found, also uh, in the course of doing the examination at the scene, I didn't find any personal effects. I didn't find any remnants of clothing. So it looks like she's likely nude at the scene. And so many years ago, early in my training, I was told when filling out death certificates, one of the things that's important is to be consistent. And throughout my career, if I don't have demonstrable physical trauma to the remains, I will tend to use the term undetermined and then will specifically say why. In this case, I called the cause of death undetermined due to decomposition with skeletonization. I believe if I had had the intact body, I could have, uh, could have come up with a specific cause of death. But I'm limited based on what I have. The body is too decomposed. All I have is a skeleton. Because the circumstances, again, young female, this isolated area where it's far removed when she, from where she was last known to be alive and no personal effects, no clothing. As a medical examiner with 30 years of experience, if I were to find an, if I were to see an intact individual at this type of a scene, first thing I'm going to think of is some type of, type of homicidal violence, uh, specifically some type of asphyxial type component, strangulation, suffocation, chest compression, things of that nature. Because if you have a nude individual, nude or partially nude, that better be, as a medical examiner, that better be one of the first things you're thinking about. And so the fact that she doesn't have any skeletal trauma does not exclude that. And again, my cause of death undetermined due to decomposition with skeletonization. It's not if I could test this or that, I could come up with a cause of death. There's, there's no getting around the fact that I don't have what I need to have to, make what I, to, to rule out what I think is going on. I'm very suspicious of strangulation, chest compression, suffocation, smothering, something of that nature. And I just do not have the body in a condition where I can prove that or disprove that. And so I've called it undetermined. And as you can tell from listening to me, I'm very verbose about stuff. On the death certificate, I'm limited to what I can put. But in my report, I'm quite explicit about these are my findings, these are my impressions from the get-go. There's nothing, there's no more testing I can do because what I need to see is not there. And there's no bringing that back. I mean, her neck structures, they're not there. Skin, flesh, it's not there. And it's not that not only can I not tell, no other pathologist is going to have access to this because it's not there. She has decomposed to the point where I can't establish this. I can say I'm very suspicious, and that's where I have to leave it because it's, it's based on the circumstances. And so that's how, I have, that's how I came up with my cause and manner of death. By convention, unless I have, again, being consistent, unless I have physical trauma, I tend to call things undetermined and say why. And 
but then we'll go into detail in my report about what my opinion might be. And again, based on my experience, 30 years as a medical examiner with this type of situation, again, young female, um, deceased, no obvious trauma, and decomposed well, aware from, well away from where she was last known to be alive. This is different from someone who may have dementia, live in the area, and then shows up dead in the woods somewhere. You know, it's, it's very much dependent upon the circumstances, and these circumstances are very suspicious for homicidal violence, but I can't prove it because of the condition of the remains. Dr. Terry, based on the recovery of the remains in this case, uh, were you able to make any conclusions about how long the remains had been at the scene where they were at? Or, or, yeah, that's it. Uh, they'd been there a while, I would say, and by a while, months, maybe, you know, I, I think she was last known to be alive in January, and she, or not January, July of 2022, and then his, the remains were found in February of 2023. Uh, so it's consistent with that time period. Uh, and I say that because almost all of the flesh is gone. There, there are a couple of bones that have a slight amount of dried uh, soft tissue, but it's very minimal. And there is some fatty degenerate, uh, degenerating material referred to as adipocere uh, that's associated with a, uh, you know, rare bones. But she is almost completely skeletonized at that point. And so she's, she's been there for a period of months.